On September 21st, 2020, I published the very first Tiny Basic Computers video outlining the idea for an easy build, simple 8-bit programmable computer project that was relatively low cost and easy enough for more interested people to attempt. What I didn't expect is just how the idea and series captured the imagination of so many of you and gained real momentum. Now, almost three years in and a lot has changed to the point that I think it is time to call time on the original Tiny Basic Computers project. Hello and welcome back to this, the final edition of Tiny Basic Computers from youtube.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep with me, Tom, where we have been building easy to assemble, low cost, real programmable computer hardware. In today's video, I want to recap what's been happening with the project over the last six months, bringing you up to date with all the latest developments and builds and introduce what happens next. As stated, this is the final Tiny Basic Computers episode, but it's not the end of the project. In fact, far from it. Throughout this and many other projects here on Wi-Fi Sheep, I have been truly grateful to be partnering with PCBWay.com, the number one solution for all your turnkey PCB manufacturing and assembly needs. And if you're like me and have an ever-growing interest and need in hobbyist electronics, then having a company like PCB Way at your disposal really is invaluable and will be for us going forward with more advanced tiny basic computer builds. If not done so already, do go and take a look at PCBWay.com and sign up for your free account. Trust me, once you get into having your own professional custom PCBs made, it really opens up so many possibilities for your own future projects. So from its launch, the Tiny Basic Computers project has gained a strong core following and with that has come many suggestions and requests. The top one being more RAM, better IO storage solutions and color text and graphics. Now, I was reluctant to go full bore on this, worried about feature creep that has dogged other notable projects in recent times, increased complexity and costs. But saying that, we did get there with Tiny Basic 4 Color, which did give an original AVR at Mega 328P architecture, color and USB support. Be that via the inclusion of a Raspberry Pi to act as a dumb terminal and USB keyboard driver. I even went on to build a test rig system allowing use of SD cards for program storage. However, the original Atmega 328P at only 2K of working RAM, that rig had just 200 bytes left for any basic code once all the source code and libraries had been installed. Hence, not very viable. I did go on to look at more powerful 32-bit microcontrollers like the ESP32 and even the Raspberry Pi Pico, the latter being a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M0 base. And although a modified version of the Tiny Basic source code did compile, the ESP version did not support sound or pin out I.O. and the ARM builds just crashed, even though they did run for a little time, which was really, really annoying. Hence, I decided to stay with the AVR 8-bit architecture as it offers the best compatibility with this build of Tiny Basic. And to be honest, other than the RAM and some speed increases, there's very little advantage to using 32-bit microcontrollers over 8-bit AVR. Okay, so since I started the original Tiny Basic Computers project, it has seen some very successful uses by a number of third party customers, and I have provided breadboard versions to a number of museums and education organisations, such as the National Museum of Computing at Bletchley Park. These have been used for student and young people in STEM based courses with great success, with these partners running workshops and taught classroom sessions using the system. So far, although I've been asked, I've decided against making a commercially available kit for machine, mainly due to the cost and the fierce competition with a number of very high profile hobby kit computers on or coming to the market at time of recording. With the main issue at the moment for me being the cost, 
a kit product produced by myself would cost you far, far more than if you just sourced the parts yourself. Hence, I strongly feel the source and build it yourself approach is much more inclusive and cost effective. Saying that, I won't rule out an official product at a later date if I felt there was sufficient interest. So, as I mentioned, this is the final Tiny Basic Computers video. So, what happens next? Well, the Tiny Basic Facebook group and original free build continues to be available and can be joined at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash WFS Tiny Basic. If you join the free dollar Patreon tier for the updated downloads and Tiny Basic toolkit, then this also continues. However, I won't be doing any more development on these. Over the last six months, I've been building a new prototype machine with a view of doing a new through-hole solder custom PCB. And this is where our partners at PCBWay come in. As development has progressed, the new version 5 Tiny Basic is starting to get far removed from the original Tiny Basic we started with. So I now feel it's a little confusing to continue calling it Tiny Basic, as a whole lot of new commands and features have been added. Therefore, the system will now be known as Project Rio and Rio Basic. The name Rio doesn't have any South American connection. Rather, it's named after a pet budgie, Rio, who won't shut up and makes lots of noise and can often be heard in the background of some of the videos here on the channel. I will be starting a new build project shortly for those of you that want to build the new, more powerful Project Rio 8-bit system. For this, we'll be using the Arduino Mega 2560, a very capable AVR 8-bit microcontroller clocked to 16 megahertz and coming with 8K of RAM and a generous 4K of EEPROM onboard storage. As with previous builds, we'll attempt to do this with no soldering, although at least one element might have to be soldered together. And we'll go into more detail on that in a future video. The new Rio Basic features better colour graphics and SD filer support, meaning that larger programs can be created and simple on-screen games are now possible, with working inky statements in Basic, allowing for plotting and replotting of text and graphical elements on screen. Let's take a quick look at what the current Alpha version 5 system can do. So the first thing you're going to notice is obviously we have much more RAM on the system. And we've got almost 4K or just over 4K of EEPROM. And in this case, we've got 6K available for memory. Now, bear in mind last time it was 1K of RAM or memory and 1K of EEPROM storage. On top of that, we've also got as big an SD card as you want to fit. I think this runs up to about 64 gigabyte SD card. I think I've got like a two, two gig SD card in, which is more than sufficient. So if we now ask for Hashtag mem, just check the memories in the system. It is, and load, oops, not loaf, <laughs> load demo.bass. Okay, and can I list? There it is, that's off the SD card. And can we run? We can, and that's looking really good. And we can go to color test. And again, you're looking at this on a composite PAL, so you're going to get some slight blown artifact. It would be a lot sharper if it was the native HDMI. Bearing in mind, it can only output 640 by 480 pixels. So that is the um, stuck standard um, resolution at the moment. But OK, so that's looking really, really promising. So fundamentally, the system is more or less all there. Uh, but we've got a few other things that we can uh, sort of test. So if I, for example, ask to load and we could have a look at guess two. Dot bass. And we can list, check that program is in. And if we run. So it's a simple guessing game, it's also calling out one or two of the color commands. So I've got to think of a no. There we go. So 
kind of simple stuff, but it runs. Now, this program originally did sound, but I had to cut all the sound out to get it to run on the 1K system we had before. Obviously, now I've got much more memory available. If we just escape. Uh, hang on, we'll go no for new game. There we go. Right, thank you. And if I uh, just check our memory again, so this time it's hashtag mem. You can see even with the program in memory, we still got 5,762 bytes of available memory, which is great. So, you know, that works fine. Okay, let's just try, uh, let's just try the simple binary test, which I think we had before, but let's just see if that works. So load binary dot bass. Yeah, so that was a demonstration that we had running on the former system. So you've probably seen it before. But it does now mean finally we might actually get an opportunity <laughs> to write some uh, larger programs that take full advantage of the new basic BIOS that we've got running on this system. Now, for the very first time, the full source code for Frio Basic will be made available for the Arduino IDE. Meaning as long as you have the drivers and resource libraries installed, you can compile Rio Basic yourself on Mac, Linux or Windows without needing the hex uploaders. All this is going to form part of a new Project Rio Patreon tier from $8 US over on patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi sheep. And will include program listings, diagrams and at a later date Gerber files for PCBs and even 3D print files for cases, along with, as mentioned, source code for Rio Basic. I'm also going to look at offering the ESP32 version of Tiny Basic 4 Color, which runs with a cool 32K of RAM for Basic, but as mentioned, very little else. For now, Project Rio Patreon will go live shortly but might not be ready before this video comes out. So do check in the video description to see if the link has gone live as yet. So there's a lot to come here on Wi-Fi Sheep. If you've been following the Tiny Basic Computers project since 2020, then I thank you so much for your interest and continued support. And I hope you'll join me for the next chapter with Project Rio. Details for PCB Way, the Tiny Basic Computers Facebook group, and the Wi-Fi Sheet Patreon can be found in the description to this video. If not done so already, please do consider liking and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on any future Project Rio or other videos here on Wi-Fi Sheep. And as always, thank you so much for your company and I hope to see you real soon right here on the channel. Until next time, bye for now. Thank you.